Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. On this video, I'm going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem compared to special right triangles compared to right triangle trigonometry. I'm not going to go into much detail here. I'm just going to talk about the pros and cons of these methods. And if you want to see uh, the detailed videos on these, you're welcome to go to my website, dousehouse.com. Uh, I'm going to start with the Pythagorean Theorem because that's what you're probably most familiar with. The Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, you learned about this one well before you learned about special right triangles and right triangle trigonometry, uh, according to my experience in teaching math. Uh, the pros of using the Pythagorean Theorem are if you know two sides out of three sides on a right triangle, uh, then you can find the missing side. And so we could label these guys A and B here, and we could figure out what C is in this particular case. Uh, also, you don't need to know any other angle measure other than the right angle. And so since I know this is a right angle, I know two side lengths, I can figure out the third side here. Uh, you can also use uh, the Pythagorean Theorem to tell if you have an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle, or a right triangle, uh, depending on upon what A squared plus B squared equals compared to C squared. Uh, and the cons, though, for the Pythagorean Theorem are you can't use it to find missing angles. Uh, in other words, I cannot use the Pythagorean Theorem to figure out what these angle measures are. Uh, again, it's only limited to finding a third side. Uh, also, you can't use it if you only know one side length. Uh, if I did not know this is three inches on this particular uh, triangle, then I'm stuck. I can't do anything here. Uh, and that's where special right triangles come in. Uh, the pros behind special right triangles are if you only know one side length and you know you have a 45, 45, 90 or a 30, 60, 90 triangle, then you can use uh, the ratios that we have for special right triangles to find the missing side lengths. Uh, for example, we would label this guy X, this guy X, and this guy X square root 2, and we could figure out what X is and we can figure out all the side lengths. Again, so you're, you, if you only know one side length but you know you have one of these two triangles, then you can find the other two side lengths. Uh, again, like on this one as well, we, this guy would be labeled X, this would be x square root 3, and, and then this guy here would be 2x. And if we can identify one of these sides are and we can find x, then we can find the missing sides. And so that's a, a major positive or pro compared to the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, so it's, but it's, it's also a shortcut to the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, if you knew two sides on this triangle, uh, you could use the Pythagorean Theorem to figure out the third side, but if you know the shortcut, it'll take you less time if you know the shortcut and you have a 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90 triangle to find the third side. Uh, but there are cons to using the special right triangle. Uh, you can't use it to find angle measures. Just like Pythagorean Theorem, it's only for sides. Also, you can't use special right triangles if you don't have a 45, 45, 90, or a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I mean, what if these, one of these angles was 20, or what if one of these angles was, was 75? Uh, you can't use it, uh, special right triangles, to find missing side links. And that's why I, I really love the right triangle trigonometry. Uh, this is the most versatile of these other methods uh, because you don't, it's not just limited to sides or just limited to angles. Uh, it says, so pros, you can find missing angles and sides if you know at least a combination of an angle and a side length, or if you know two side lengths other than the right angle. And so we already know this is a right triangle. And if you know one of the angles other than the 90 and one of the sides, then you can figure out all the missing, uh, the other missing angle and the other two missing sides. Or if we know we have a right triangle and we know this side length, we know this side length, we could find the third side length and we can also figure out what the other two angles are. And so this is the most versatile because you don't, it's not just limited to these specific triangles for the 45, 45, 90, or the 30, 60, 90, and it's not only limited to just finding sides. Uh, but you need uh, probably a calculator that has uh, the sine uh, function, uh, the cosine function, and the tangent function. And so this is really tricky to use if you don't have some kind of scientific graphing calculator or something along those lines. Uh, there are methods around it, but uh, you really need to have a, a really a calculator that has the sine, cosine, and tangent functions on it. Uh, it's also not only limited to right triangles. Uh, the videos that I have on my website are only limited to right triangles. I've only learned right triangle trigonometry, but it's my understanding that you can use uh, trigonometry for uh, other triangles other than right triangles. Uh, but there is a con. Uh, you can't use it if you only know one angle 
or one side length. And so if I didn't know this angle here, then I'm stuck. I can't do anything about it. Or if I didn't know one of these side lengths here, then I'm stuck. And there, and then you know I can't do anything about it. Uh, but I mean, this is the most versatile of these three methods. Uh, and so I really like right triangle trigonometry. Uh, and so if you haven't learned it yet, I highly recommend uh, just investing time and watching videos online to, to learn about it. But anyways, hopefully that helps you understand the pros and cons behind uh, these, these uh, three methods for right triangles. And I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.